Welcome to another edition of the Insider Mailbag. I'm Jared Johnson, and we have a bunch of good questions here from inside the Red Raider subscribers, so I'm going to dive right into them. First one comes from Tech Freak, who says, you know, the Big 12 went 5-0 in, in bowl games this year. Does that change my view on this football season, and where do I think the Big 12 uh, ranks overall against other conferences in football? Yeah, overall, the talent level is down. It's been going down in the Big 12 for some time, really, since they... Uh, kind of broke up since you know hit, you know went to ten teams essentially. You know the loss of uh, programs like Nebraska and Missouri, Colorado. Um, you know it it hurt the um, the way the Big Twelve uh, the way it's way it's seen. You know, um, and a lot of the talent, and you can see this, there's stories on 24-7 Sports and on Inside the Red Raiders where they really break down how a lot of the top talent leaves the state, even leaves, you know, Texas. Um, and that's really, let's, that's what we're talking about, right, is the, the main talent level or talent base for the Big 12 is Texas. So, um, and not just going to Oklahoma, I mean going to like, you know, the SEC or going to even if they stay in, in Texas and go to Texas A&M, um, they're, they're going to the SEC, they're going to the Big Ten, they're even going to the Pac-12. So, um, you know, the way I see the Big 12, now first off, they they did a good job in the bowl games. There's no doubt there's some good matchups for the Big 12. And for all the talk about Ohio State being fresh, and I think that's valid um, for them doing well, obviously blowing out Clemson, and they're set to take on Alabama in the national championship. There is also something to be said for the fact that the Big 12 has been playing uh, for you know for a season for a while now. So I mean, uh, the Big 12 did a really good job of of playing through this COVID era with all the restrictions, with all the setbacks, and the teams that made it through were seemed to get better later in the season. Like TCU was better in the season. Later in the season, Oklahoma was better later in the season. Even Iowa State, though they lost in the Big 12 championship game, played Oklahoma very well. All those teams seem to be playing uh, a lot of their best football later in later in the season. So, and that played out in, in the bowl game. So, yeah, you know, I, I, it doesn't hurt. I think one thing that always shows up is the Big 12 isn't as bad in defense as the perception is. You know, perhaps th there's just really good offenses in the Big 12. But there's been kind of a paradigm shift in the way the Big 12 is, while they're still playing good offense, they're running the football more. You're seeing more power uh, offensive sets out of the spread from teams like, you know, whether it be Baylor or Oklahoma State or West Virginia, Oklahoma certainly. Um, even Texas does some. So, yeah, you know, the Big 12 was impressive. 5-0 is uh, – that's the best – you know, of any of the conferences this year. And I think some of that was matchups. Some of that is what I already said. Um, and I think, obviously, I don't say obviously, but it's safe to say that the Big 12 is better than the perception. But I still would say it's behind in terms of ranking. I would say the SEC, if you add in Notre Dame, the ACC might even be better just because the top half of it, you know, with Notre Dame or uh, North Carolina stepping up now, Obviously, Clemson, you have three really solid schools at the top. The rest of it is is about, like, the Big 12. But really, what do you have in the Big 12? I mean, you have Oklahoma and then maybe Iowa State right now. Um, and that's – how does that compare with, like, a Clemson, a Notre Dame, and a North Carolina? I just don't think it really they really do. So and then I think the Big 10, you know, obviously Ohio State, and then they have more. They have more. They have they – have, good all-around teams. And I don't know. The Pac-12 doesn't seem, just doesn't trip my trigger. So I would say the Big 12 is third or fourth maybe, you know, uh, out, of all the, out of the Power 5 conferences. I just don't, it's, I, it'd probably be, so you have SEC, Big 10, and yeah, the Big 12 is there third or fourth, fighting with the ACC, really. So that's how I see it. All right, next question comes from Red Raider Grad 06. Who asks any indication on if and what changes Cumby could make to his offensive support staff? What would uh, I change if I were OC uh, staff or playbook? Uh, well, I think the playbook. I the the fact that they're going to be multiple. They're going to have more 
motion. They'll you know they brought in these tight ends. Bear Morton recently told Pete Christie he was on you know our radio show, the Rock and Pregame show, and said was talking about the 12 personnel. How he's excited about that. How they they plan on uh, also. Uh, you know, driving the ball downfield more under Cumbie. All those things sound really good to me. I'll believe it when I see it. In that same vein, in terms of believing it when I see it, I've heard a lot of chatter and talk from sources, from people I trust within the program, around the program, who have said there's a couple of spots that could open up, that could be, um, you know, uh, on the offensive side of the ball. So I think... One that's been talked about that I'm comfortable and at least mentioning here is the offensive line coach, Steve Farmer. And people have talked about Chris Thompson, who's currently at Florida State, uh, coming over here. And there's a lot of obstacles. There's a $500,000 buyout. Um, it's just going to cost a lot of money to bring him in, but, you know, that's a possibility. So there are a couple of possibilities, but once again, I'll believe when I see it. And uh, sometimes these things just take some time, but uh, I continue to hear about them. But... I don't want to. I don't want to be another one of those things like, oh, it's coming. It's, there's going to be changes, and then there aren't changes, and Red River fans are disappointed or confused again. I, I, in terms of coaching changes, um, I just want to. I want to see how how it plays out instead of just chasing the rumors, um, and the chatter. Even if it's not rumors, it's chatter, like real chatter. If it doesn't happen, then people get get excited and then and then they're disappointed. So, I think there are things that are being considered. We'll have to see what shakes out. And I'm as interested in, as anyone out there, any Red Raider fan out there, to see what changes do shake out and what that means, not just for personnel but also for recruiting because it's already affected. Um, I'll just say some offensive recruiting um, since, since Cumbie's been here. Um, in terms of who they really want to bring in and who they don't and just those kind of conversations. It gets pretty complicated, but it is it has already had an effect on that. So we'll have to see how it plays out. All right, next question comes from Texan. It says, West Virginia and Tech both had McDonald's All-Americans opt out and transfer. Should we and they be worried, or is it this a new age reality that is simply a meh next man up? Well, you know, honestly, I think it's a little bit of both. I don't – anytime you lose – and let's just say – Let's just stay with Tech, all right? Obviously, Shibwe is a, on paper a big loss. They definitely acted, uh, West Virginia coaching staff, I'll just say, definitely acted like, meh, no big deal, good rinse, addition by subtraction. And I don't always buy that, you know, uh, of a player of, of that caliber. But then again, maybe he was that much of a headache. So I, I'm unfamiliar with that situation, really, other than he was a good player that raised my, you know, raised the eyebrows. He was a lot more accomplished than Omari Burnett, that's for sure. Uh, Texas Tech's McDonald's All-American. But when you couple the fact that, yeah, all the time and effort spent to recruit Omari Burnett, all the fanfare, him come in, play 12 games, play poorly, and then transfer out, it's disappointing. You know, you combine that with Joel and Tomway, um, him leaving after three games, after the whole waiver nonsense. I mean, what an odyssey, you know, that was about trying to get him ready. And then he left for the, you know, part of the summer and he came in. There was all that drama around that. And then, you know, I mean, it cost another guy a scholarship. You know, another guy got processed out of here. Um, and then for him to leave after three games, I mean, that is, part of that's karma, honestly. But part of that is, uh, it's very frustrating. So, but I also think, so, yeah, that's worrisome. But I also think, yeah, it's the Wild West in terms of transfers in college sports now, just with some of these new rules. Um, and then COVID, just some of the way things have happened with some of these waivers. It is so different. So from that standpoint, you know, I don't think you should worry as much. Uh, and definitely there is a next man up thing. I Closer to, to this whole story, I do think it's going to open up some minutes for some players uh, who – could make the best, you know, the most of those minutes, and could it end up? I'm, I'm not gonna say it's a good thing to Mario Burnett left, uh, but perhaps for this year it could tighten the rotation, get some things set, and Texas Tech could identify who they are faster this season, which could help. All right, the final question comes from Red Raider KA, who wants to know: In my eyes, what does Coach Wells need to do in the next 12 months? Uh, to win back the fan base. He says he knows wins is an easy answer here, but what else can he do? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm racking my brain to think about what else could he do. And 
you know, that press conference where he kind of opened up and really shared how he felt about the situation and his job and said a lot of the right things was a step in the right direction. But truly, I think now more than ever, since I've been here covering Texas Tech for eight years, this is a case where you have to win. That is the bottom line. They, Coach Wells and Texas Tech football has to win next year. All the platitudes, all the, oh, we're getting better, or this or that, uh, you know, all that goes out the window. But year three, Tech fans are tired of losing. Coach Wells needs to win. And I know that's not what you wanted to hear necessarily, necessarily, Ribbit or K.A., but that's the way I see it. it. It truly is. It's now it's win or else at this point. So with that, I want to thank everyone for great questions. Thank you for watching, and until next time.